found alive nearly four years after she vanished. The case of Alicia Navarro remains a mystery. The teenager left her home in Glendale back in 2019, left a note saying, I'm leaving, but I'll be back. Only to resurface last weekend, four years later, more than 1,300 miles away. Tonight, we're learning more about where exactly she's been. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live after speaking to the private investigator who helped Alicia's mom on that long search almost four years now for her daughter. John, Christina, Alicia Navarro walked right into the Haver Police Department in Montana near the Canadian border. I'm told she wanted to be taken off the missing persons list so she could get her ID and other documents. Miracles do exist and never lose hope and always fight. Stunned and overwhelmed by news she's waited for since Alicia Navarro ran away from her Glendale home in September of 2019. On Wednesday, Jessica Nunez reunited with her now 18-year-old daughter over a video call. Trent oh Steele, president of Anti-Predator Project, uh, has been by Jessica's over. side working to find Alicia. How many tips have you received yourself? If I went back and looked, well over a thousand, two thousand maybe, and they've come in from all over, all over the country, all over the world. And we've gotten tips from Europe, Mexico, Canada, uh, from coast to coast, Los Angeles to New York, Seattle to Miami. I mean, we've gotten tips all over the world. Why did Alicia end up in Montana? Well, that's a million dollar question. A question yet to be answered. Glendale police say the teen walked into Haver Police Department, located in a small town in Montana, near the U.S.-Canadian border, identifying herself and asking to be removed from the missing persons list. Steele tells me Alicia wanted to get her ID and other documents, but what she's been doing since September 15, 2019 is still unclear. There's still a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving pieces, and I think information's probably going to continue to come out for the next weeks, months, maybe even years. Alicia's mother has told Fox 10 in previous reports that her daughter enjoyed online gaming and could have been lured away from home. There was a certain point where she maybe didn't expect this to have this type of outcome. So she's pretty overwhelmed. She's trying to deal with the situation. And, you know, obviously she still has other kids at home. She still has a life to live. So she's trying to get this all in perspective and, and pull everything together. A statement from Alicia's family to Fox 10 reads in part, We want to start by saying how happy we are that Alicia has been found alive and safe. It is a blessing that after being missing for so long, Alicia can come back home. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all the families of missing loved ones that have not yet returned home. If there is anything that Alicia's story has taught us is that you can never give up hope. And Haver PD released a statement to the press today, basically saying they will be assisting Glendale police with this case, whatever they need. Again, though, the details are just slowly coming out. Yeah, and you spoke with Alicia's mom, right? So what is she feeling right now? Because this is four years has gone by. That's a long time. She lost her child and for four years. She feels shock. She's overwhelmed, obviously not ready to go on camera at this time, but when she called me on the phone, she was definitely emotional, in tears, and just saying a lot is going on right now, but she really was more appreciative of the community and everyone on social media through these past three to four years yeah. sharing this story. Again, she hasn't physically met with Alicia yet. Alicia now 18. We yet to see when that type of a reunion happens. I mean, only 14 when she disappears. It's hard to imagine she had the wherewithal to care for herself. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to be taking care of her. So that is what is the next step in this case between Glendale PD and however Haver PD will assist is piecing together the timeline the last three to four years from September 2019 up until now and how long has she actually been in Montana? Where yeah. has she been and what has her life been like? There's definitely going to be a lot to navigate here. She's yeah. an adult now. Does it complicate it that at 18 does she not have to volunteer any information? And that's a question that uh, we keep asking is what, what happens next as far as her adult life. Uh, clearly, she wanted to get things together and get her documents, hence being taken off the missing persons list. What, what triggered that for yeah, her? I, I, a lot of questions. She might not even come back here, right, because her mom no longer lives here. Her mom does not live in Arizona right so. now, we're told. And so really, this is going to be interesting wow. to see what, what's next for Alicia Navarro. But yeah. I know that obviously the family is just very relieved. Yeah, of course. Uh, you don't often get this outcome um, no. with a case like this. So, yeah. Right. Thank you, Justin. Thanks.
All new at 5, a story you will only see here on Fox 10. Phoenix police are investigating after a mother says her son, who was quadriplegic, was dumped out of a wheelchair and onto the hot ground outside of a major valley hospital. His family says he was having issues with his catheter, but claims the hospital didn't fully treat him and left him in a park where he was bitten by hundreds of ants, unable to move. Fox 10's Stephanie Bennett joins us live with the story. Steph. John and Christina, good evening. Yeah, to make matters worse, it was also during this brutal summer heat. It actually happened right here behind me. You can see the hospital on one side, and then it's the park right across here where we're at right now. Now, according to police paperwork, there was actually a man who lives in this park. He is homeless, and he claims that he witnessed the whole thing, and he actually let the victim use his own phone to call his mom for help. Now, a quick warning to viewers. Some of this footage may be disturbing. See, this is my son. Why did they throw you here, Jess? Because they don't want they don't want to call you. They didn't want to call, and so I'm supposed to pick you up here. This is how they discharged my son from the hospital. Family call him their gentle giant. Ceci Garcia holding back tears after she found her quadriplegic son, 33-year-old Jesus Gomez, laying half naked on the ground outside Valley Wise Health's Maryvale campus. So when I got to the park, I just turned on my phone and started Recording. On June 14th, paramedics with the Phoenix Fire Department took Jesus to Valleywise after he says he was having issues with his catheter. Ceci works as a caregiver to her son and to others, so she was not able to go with him in the ambulance. Like a doctor came, they look at me, they, they wrote down my name, they wrote down all my information, they gave me a shot, and then they said, all right, come on, let's go, let's get out of here. Jesus says as he was waiting, three security guards came up asking for his name, phone number, and address. Jesus says he was in a lot of pain and felt dizzy. He also suffers from a brain injury and was unable to remember that information. That's when Jesus claims the three security guards started pushing his wheelchair out of the hospital. He pushed me all the way across the street, on the wheelchair, threw me off the wheelchair, on, on the floor, at the park. They walked away. They have that information. When the paramedics left, they said, we left everything. They should have all the information. They're supposed to call somebody else to put him on a gurney and take him back home. But they didn't do that. Says he called 911, and the same paramedics picked him up and took him to a different hospital. I'm sorry that happened to you, ma'am, because I was the guy that was talking to you earlier. According to police paperwork obtained by Fox 10, when officers and the fire captain questioned hospital staff, they claimed, quote, Jesus refused treatment, got into a non-motorized wheelchair, and left the hospital alone. But paperwork states that the wheelchair had a safety lever on the back, which is only deactivated by the person pushing the wheelchair from behind, making the probability of Jesus operating the wheelchair alone highly unlikely, let alone the fact that he is a quadriplegic. Paperwork also shows that the wheelchair was nowhere to be seen, indicating that someone brought it back inside. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't do anything for myself. While on the ground, Jesus suffered severe swelling and blistering from ants. Paramedics took him to St. Joseph's Hospital, where he was admitted for six days and underwent surgery for his originating catheter issue. In a statement, Valley Wise tells Fox 10, quote, while we cannot discuss individual patient cases due to patient privacy rules, Valley Wise Health remains committed to providing exceptional care every patient every time. In the event an issue arises that's not in line with our mission, we take steps to improve outcomes for all patients and modify any policies or procedures to ensure safe and top quality care. He's vulnerable, very vulnerable. He, he can't fight back. Justice will prevail. Yeah, and additionally, amongst that police paperwork, it says that the fire captain, when he went in there and also gave a statement, he says, quote, where he responded to several calls for service related to patients of the Valley Wise Hospital being dropped off in this general area where Jesus was located in the past. Now, of course, when Phoenix police in, uh, wrap up their investigation, they're going to then pass it along to the state attorney general's office, and they've also notified adult protective services and the Arizona Department of Health as well. And the family tells us that they do plan to press charges. Tonight, Glendale police are searching for the suspect involved in a deadly road rage shooting. Police say that someone shot and killed a 23 year old motorcyclist. Fox 10's Lauren Clark has more on the investigation. 
Well, officers say an apparent road rage situation happened a few blocks away, and right now they believe that this is related. We know a 23 year old lost his life in this quiet area near homes and a school and a good Samaritan attempted to try to help. Around 4 p.m., Austin Seidler was driving down 67th Avenue near Gelding when he saw the motorcyclist. When we pulled up, we stopped at the stop sign, and before turning, I saw the man on his motorcycle still, swerving in and out of his lane. Seidler recognized something was wrong. He fell over, and at the time, I didn't see what was going on. I just saw him fall off of his bike. The off-duty MCSO detention officer sprung into action using his first aid training. When I ran up, I started seeing the blood that was all over him. Um, before getting down too close to it, what I did is I ran back to my car, uh, grabbed my work uniform and uh, a jacket that I had in my car, and I put, put pressure over the wound uh, and then used another piece of clothing to try to put it under his arm to keep him from burning on the, uh, on the asphalt. Austin says he stayed there with the man until paramedics arrived. He was unresponsive at the time, um, more just looking around a little bit, uh, but that really only lasted a few seconds before he became unresponsive. Officers with Glendale Police then began a homicide investigation. Our initial investigation determined that there was some type of road rage incident near 67th Avenue and Greenway with a secondary vehicle. One they believe is associated with this shooting, but what exactly happened and where the victim was shot is still unknown. We didn't hear any gunshot, so I'm not sure how far he drove to get to this point. And Glendale police are urging everyone tonight not to engage in road raid incidents and said just call police. They also need your help with this case right now and are trying to find any type of witnesses. If you have any information about what happened, please reach out to them. Reporting here in Glendale, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News. A small Arizona community rocked by a violent crime over the weekend. It was an armed robbery that turned deadly for a store owner. Linda Williams has the story from Arizona City. When Pinal County Sheriff's detectives arrived here at the Sunlight Market in Arizona City to do a welfare check, they found the owner inside dead. The victim, 41-year-old Muhammad Abul Hasim, had been fatally shot during an armed robbery. The community is stunned to lose the man they called Dream in such a violent way. We don't see that very often, and seeing it now is just, it's caught everybody by surprise. And it's, it's very shocking, too, very shocking. Sunlight Market customers say Dream was a family man who, over the years, has become a friend to many. He had a great sense of humor and helped his customers. If you were short a buck or two or, you know, like, oh, I forgot my wallet, come back and pay me. That was this man. He was beloved. Yeah, yeah, he was a very well-respected man. Sunday, the same day as the crime, Pinal County Sheriff's detectives arrested 31-year-old Billy Johnson of Casa Grande and charged him with Hasim's murder and armed robbery. Hasim's store, Sunlight Market, is closed today. Out front, a memorial continues to grow. A vigil is planned for Wednesday evening as the community comes together to honor and remember Dream. We're here for his family, whatever they need. 24-7. Linda Williams, Fox 10 News.